Coming to you from the Loading Ready Run orbiting underground moon base, it's the Lurecast. What this thing is that you're watching now. This mm -hmm. thing right here. Or possibly listening to. It, mm -hmm. People Either listen way. to this? The, yeah. Oh. I thought we were just sort of talking into a camera for and, like 45 minutes and people and, just And sometimes it. people just watch it but don't have the audio on. We're basically... Oh. Or, we're like a silent film. Yeah. 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 We're organizing electrons. That's fair. So today uh, we wanted to talk about, in honor of... Uh, Cam building his uh, new computer. We, in, we in fact, Yay. interrupted it to record this podcast. Just, yeah. just beyond that wall is a half-built PC that Cam has been waiting for for so long. Mm. Yeah, about six weeks, I yeah, think, it's, all told. Yeah, it's just been a long slog for him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just... It was it, suffering. It was too much to not say, all right, Cam, stop, stop what you're doing and let's go record a podcast about computers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're going to talk about our, I guess, our personal... Computer com history, I computer guess? Computer history. Yeah, just what computers we've had and well, I guess what we use them for and... And yeah, I guess, and why, you know, mm -hmm. why you had the computers you had. Yeah, that's fair. In situations where you actually got to decide what computer you had. All right, mm -hmm. so I guess let's kick it off with the first computer you ever had that you Ooh. can remember. I guess because there's a chance that you had a computer before you could remember, I guess, but. I had a Tandy Color Computer 3. Nice. Okay. It was nice. from Radio Shack, and uh, I programmed games in BASIC on it mm -hmm. from a book. Yep. How old were you? Less than eight. Yeah. Eight or nine, maybe? Yeah, uh, we, had a, we, we had an Apple II. Hmm. That was also my first computer, the little, but the the green the and little, black. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also programming books, uh, programming uh, things in BASIC from the book. Yeah, copying it out. I definitely don't remember program. I definitely didn't do any programming myself until much later. Um, I mean, it was more copying. It was from more the book. Yeah, as yeah. To programming. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> but even then, I didn't do that. Uh, I think yeah. I think my first P, like my first real computer was an Apple II. But I don't really rem. I feel like. That was before I could really grasp what I was supposed to do with a computer. Because mm. the first computer I really truly remember is uh, a 386. Mm. Mm. I mean, the, the Apple II was basically the equivalent. It was just kind of a really bad uh, video game console. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. It well, didn't do a whole lot. Like no. a, an original Nintendo mm -hmm. would have been far superior <laughs> In terms of yeah. everything that we used it for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Hard Hat Mac was Did a game that... I, I, we, that was one of those games that I actually, like... I don't know, some, that somebody, because it's called Apple II, mm -hmm. uh, isn't very hard to emulate these days. Somebody made, like, a JavaScript Apple II emulator oh, yeah. that you can load up. And, like, I loaded up a couple of the games that I used to play, including this game called Hard Hat Mac, which was sort of a... I guess it was kind of a... Mario Brothers mm -hmm. clone, which we had original Mario Brothers too. Oh, nice. before it was Super. Yeah, right. And it was right. just going back and forth in the thing. Um, and man, that game was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I played King's Quest, Ooh. and we could go all the way up to King's Quest Three. Wow. With my, uh, I don't even know. It was definitely less than a megabyte of RAM. Nice. Yeah, you got uh, you, you had color, so that's yeah. pretty fancy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It was. It was dope. Like I remember I also had a floppy drive. Ooh. Ooh. I mm -hmm. remember with the 386, which I'm just going to say was my first computer because I really don't remember doing anything with the Apple II. Mm. With the 386, there was a program installed on it that had uh, a database of like all the countries of the world. Mm -hmm. Like it was just like a really early version of like of Wikipedia essentially. Yeah. Um, but obviously it was completely offline, so there was no updating it. Right. It could play the theme music, but it was playing it through the built in computer speakers. Right, right, right. So it just sounded Dude. Yeah, it just sounded god awful. it's like sixteen colors on the screen, mm -hmm. so the flags look terrible. And it had like the population and it would have been like the population from like the mid eighties or right. something like this. Right, and because I, I think I had, I think I remember playing with this computer when I was like 
seven, mm -hmm. which would have been like 89, 1990 right. sort of thing like that. And uh, it was it was amazing. That's all I used it for. I can't remember doing any schoolwork on it or word processing. Mm -hmm. There was certainly mm -hmm. no internet at the time that I was aware of. Um, and that's all it did. It just showed me countries of the world. Yeah. You didn't do any, like, did you play any video games on it? Kind of, but not just, even. Like, I don't remember, I don't have any memory of so playing. it was really and, just this, like, countries of the world. It was thing. essentially just this box that sat in her basement that taught me about countries of the so world. So an atlas would have actually been much more effective. <laughs> probably, yeah. Or, 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 like, an encyclopedia. Yeah. yeah. Like, a set of Britannica probably would have cost about the same, wouldn't probably, it? Probably, yeah. I mean, you, didn't I, play, you didn't play, like, you know, Commander Keen? And <sighs> a little. Doom? Duke 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 Nukem? I, played, Nukem? I remember playing Duke Nukem a little bit, but I'm pretty sure my parents didn't let me... Prince of Persia, mm -hmm. or no, was it Prince of Persia? Like the old, like, yeah, side-scrolling yeah. platformer. I definitely remember playing that. I'm not sure if it was on that computer or not, but I, I generally played games on my NES. Right. Mm. Um, so yeah. I didn't really we, touch the computer in terms of gaming until probably my third or fourth computer. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, I, we had the computer with the, the sort of misguided notion that it was, like, you know, more wholesome than a than a than console. A console? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, my my the first computer that actually was like used for computing, I guess, for me was I had the uh, uh, a Mac Plus. Right. Mm. So the little toaster, often called the toaster box, mm -hmm. eight inch black and white screen. Mm -hmm. So we went from green and black to black and white. So right. That was a pretty big upgrade. yeah, pretty big jump, like high, Should, higher contrast. Wait, shouldn't that be a downgrade? <laughs> You it was lost, actually you lost a real color. <laughs> it was actually uh, that that was actually like a big deal. Like you know, it, it's fun to like you know. I, of course, as a kid, I was playing around with it and did all sorts of fun stuff with it. Um, but then, as I grew older and actually found out you know more about technology and uh, about the you know Macintosh sort of history stuff in general, um, you find out all this interesting stuff like the fact that the Mac at the time. Um, the fact that, like, when you were opened it up, yeah. it would be like a white screen, like a piece of paper, and you type black on the white screen. Right. Instead of it being black, and you type white, white. text. Yeah. Right. Was like a huge deal. People, huh. were, people were like, "You're wasting all this video RAM <laughs> to make <laughs> the screen white, white when well, yeah. you could just make it black." And people, and they were like, "No, no, it's important because yeah. we want to get the metaphor there." Mm -hmm. um, and little, yeah, just that's weird actually a really like that. interesting design decision, like yeah. a very deliberate one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, so we had the we had the Mac Plus, and we had the like dot matrix mm. printer mm -hmm. with like the oh yeah um, with the 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 strips down the side that you had to rip off. Yeah, 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 yeah. The tractor strips. The tractor yep. strips. Definitely, yeah. definitely had that. Um, and uh, and so it was great because you know I could and I did I made um, you know I I, I wrote things for school and hmm. I did all sorts of word processing stuff on it and then also play games, Prince of Persia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um game called Dark Castle that I was a huge oh, yeah. fan of. Ooh, yeah. I remember Dark Castle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. thing. That game again, one of those Bats. games one of those games it's not like a punishingly difficult game, but it was just kind of a bastard of a game. Yeah, oh yeah, I remember it. There was that one level with like where there were just like twenty bats. Yeah. And all the bats did was like little parabola. Right, but if they touched you, you died. Yeah, it was the one. And they were just like bastards. To one hit. shot kill, uh, one shot you die. If you fall down a pit, you don't die because you get sent to the dungeon. The dungeon, which is like a three level long thing that you had to go through every single time. That you, yeah. fell, you fell in a hole. It was the worst. Oh, that's amazing. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, and it had like the torturer whipping guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and so there, there's that you know a few other games that I, I really remember and. Uh, yeah, it was all the, the, and for some reason, yeah, that, that, you know, we used that, that computer, uh, you know, a lot of my friends who had like, you know, two to sixes or things. And of course, like you, you're talking about like your first computer, mm -hmm. you know, full color and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Whereas the Mac Plus, it was this weird situation where it was like, it looked like a way older computer because mm -hmm. it was just black and white. Yeah. But it was actually quite powerful. But its capabilities were actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I had... Um, uh, Space Quest Three mm. was my was the big one I had on there. It could barely run Space Quest Three. Oh, um, it Space had, Quest Three was so good. There were two. There there were several different settings for 
mm -hmm. um, for sound in Space Quest 3. And so there's like the basic one, which is just like do 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 do. Um, it had something called like, it was like four voice sound, mm -hmm. where it would actually like run four synths at once. Oh, okay, yeah. And if you turn that on, it would just grind to a halt. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this, uh, the, the, this whole mm -hmm. like running four different voices at once. Way too much. Too hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It can't handle that. But, but it was good. I liked it. Sweet. Like my first actual PC was um, a 386DX40. Mm. So... Like, at the time, it was actually a pretty swank machine, and it ran DOS 5. What's the DX mean? Uh, DX was basically, like, the uh, the chipset. Oh, okay. Right? Um, for a long time, Intel had, like, like NX as their chipset designations. So up oh, until, like, Pentiums. I think, like, the top-of-the-line Pentium was a TX right. chipset. And they're like, we're going to run out of letters pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. 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 So system. now they've got, like, the, what is it, the 170 is the newest chipset. Um, which is what I'm building right now. But like, yeah, it, it had four megabytes of RAM yep. and like a hundred, a hundred megabyte hard drive. With the, with the Mac Plus, mm -hmm. um, we got, it, it, it maxed out at one meg of RAM. Yeah. Unless <laughs> you could open it up, mm -hmm. um, which was pretty easy to do, signed by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak and all the People. It's actually there's signatures of all the people who oh, work yeah? on it uh, are molded into the inside huh. of the case. Uh, but you, you open it up and there's one, there's a specific uh, resistor on the motherboard that you can clip mm -hmm. uh, that allows it to uh, register four gigs of RAM or wow. four megs. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Four megs oh, of RAM. Uh, and, uh, and so we, we got like an extra stick or something. And we were like, yes, we're so <laughs> awesome. Uh, but like, yeah, like that, that 386 had MS-DOS 5 and it had Windows 3, mm -hmm. which was, as far as my dad was concerned, was a solitaire machine. Yep. Um, yep. So my dad, dad would just play solitaire dad would exactly and, the same. and Minesweeper. Yep. And he was happy as a clam playing Minesweeper and he got like really good at it where he could crush the giant maps in like 30 seconds. Wow. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I was playing Minesweeper the other day. It's a hard game. It is. Yeah, it, it is. There's, <laughs> you know, the, he would get down to like the last. There would be, uh, one. T there would be two tiles left on the map, right? And, and it's there was, 50, 50, yeah, there was yeah. not enough information, right? Um, it was, and he'd just be like, "Well, kaboom." <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like Sudoku, but yeah, you know, before that, yeah. Um, and it was with that 386 when I was trying to play Ultima Seven. Uh, where I had to learn about how to write auto exec bat and config sys files so I could manipulate the amount of like uh, where the drivers were being stored in memory. Uh -huh. So I could move like my mouse drivers into upper memory to free up lower memory because that was right. a distinction at the time because right. you only had 640k of memory. Good God. Um, and everything else had to go up into the, everyone. Yeah, in, into the higher like yeah. into the, the megabytes of RAM. <laughs> um, but Ultima 7 needed like 600K of memory, of actual like system memory in order to run it. So you had to like take things and shove them like anywhere <laughs> you could find until you could park a bus. In, I love in, it. Yeah. Oh, it was awful. And the game took forever. And it was fine. But it was <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, that was my first kind of like hacking experience. Mm. Um, and after that, I was kind of hooked on that whole thing of like, you know, it has to get tuned in right, just right. such a way. And, you know, you could optimize your drivers and optimize like, you know, all, all these different little settings on in the system. Um, but yeah, otherwise I would just play like a lot of X-Wing and TIE Fighter and Aces of the Pacific and Aces over Europe, which were like World War II flight sim games. Nice. And then I also played Quest for Glory. Sweet. Out of all the, you know, the Sierra catalog yeah, yeah. of adventure games i was a quest for glory kid the uh the other one i for the other one i always is very closely associated in my mind with my old uh mac plus was the was um a game called manhole oh yeah i remember manhole. Um, which in some ways it might have been like one of the first you know uh, what games we now call like walking simulators right? yeah hmm. the idea was that there wasn't actually any right objective to the game it was just sort of this exploration thing right it was made by the guys who later went on to make mist 
Oh, okay. Um, oh, oh. Uh, it was where they had all sorts of cool things that they wanted to do, mm -hmm. but there wasn't actually like a game around it. It was just like, oh, it, there's it, like the game just starts with like a manhole. Mm -hmm. And you click on the manhole and it opens up and there's like a beanstalk and you can go up and down. Right. All the, and there's little like little dudes that talk to you. I actually, there's a new version of it. Um, there's like a deluxe version or something mm -hmm. that I, I downloaded on Steam because I was like, oh, I should, you know, I, I could like play this on the uh, on the stream or something. Right. And they kind of fucked around with it. And <laughs> really for one thing, there's insane. like, well, well, for one thing, there's like, for one thing, it doesn't play very well. Right. Um, but for another, there's like CGI, like they they Lucas did is what they did. <laughs> like no. seriously, there's like there's no. there's like new CGI graphics and stuff. It's just weird. I don't mm, like it. They're the worst. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, again, and that, that the big one with that one was that it was, you know, it's essentially just a series of images. Um, so it was big mm -hmm. uh, for the, the time. Like we had about a 30, we had a, about a 30 meg hard drive, external hard drive hooked up to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had to, manhole was about six or eight floppy disks. Wow. To mm. install. Right. So and that's like 10 megabytes. Yeah. So it was, it was a pretty big deal. Mm. Had to clean that up. And um, oh, the, and the other one, is, of course, um, is HyperCard, which oh, was a really right. huge deal um, at back then and was a pretty, a pretty amazing thing. It was this uh, sort of semi, this programming slash sort of scripting language mm -hmm. development environment. That was sort of designed for doing like business applications, but nobody used it for that. Right. <laughs> um, and it was like what manhole and actually yeah, and what Mist was written. Yeah, in. Mist was written in HyperCard. Uh, at least early versions of it. I'm, I think they later m rebuilt it in different software, but mm -hmm. the original version of Mist was also built in, and it was this basically it was just the way you could. It was sort of like um, uh, you know various game builder software now. I mean, mm -hmm. Flash, I guess has a lot of the same kind of things. But, yeah, actually. Um, it had this, the big innovative thing with it is it had this um, system called HyperTalk, which is the programming language, hmm. um, which had cool stuff where you could <coughs> like, you'd say like if you wanted to assign a value to the variable, you say, make this variable equal 10. Mm -hmm. Like you actually write that out. Right, <laughs> right. You don't say like x equals 10. <laughs> like I, I remember having a couple like of classes natural language. Yeah. in HyperCard. Uh, in high school, mm. um, which gives you a sense of how either how old I am or how well yeah, my was... school was. But um, like, I remember, I remember nothing about HyperCard, and I remember a lot about playing Bolo. <laughs> yep, Bolo was was awesome. That was my first landing experience, or really multiplayer gaming experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess I mean I guess that's the next step, right? Is that is the like it's computers that you had access to at school and stuff as well. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, for me, like HyperCard was, like I was kind of a big nerd. I mean, of course I was a big nerd, but I was a big like HyperCard. And, and we had like, our school had a Mac lab. Yeah. That was the computer, the, the computer lab was, it was like, you know, 30 of sort of combination Mac Pluses and Mac Classics. That's exactly what my computer yep. lab was. <laughs> the Classics being the super high-end ones. Yep, we had like four or five. I think there was like one color computer. Too. And you would like cycle through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be awesome. Um, and so, you know, you played, the bo you played Bolo, yeah. which was the main one. And so, and you, you would, you know, they're, they're the, but like computer class was usually kind of a joke, right? It was like typing tutor. And yeah. All mm -hmm. stuff like that. But in grade seven, or grade seven or grade eight, I think it was grade eight is when they actually started teaching you like, for, for my school anyway, they were like, we're actually gonna start doing some programming stuff in HyperCard. Right. And I was super excited about that because I was like already into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like coming into the computer lab after hours and I was in good with the, with the computer teacher and all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, and then w between grade seven and grade eight, they transitioned to all Windows computers no, in the lab. No. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> all my powers are gone. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, but then, of course, you could play Warcraft 2. Mm. That was the next line game. Yeah. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Um, I remember, right, I, well, like, oh, where did I go from? Like, I, I remember going from that 386 to, like, I think, like, a Pentium 90 mm -hmm. at home. Um, 
And I remember that computer um, having 16 megabytes of RAM, which was just amazing. Like, mm -hmm. that was so much. It's a lot of RAM. And then discovering, while trying to install uh, an old Lynx game, like the old golf game, that for some reason, Windows, whatever, I don't remember what it was, it would have been 95 at this point, maybe 3.1, I don't know, took up two megabytes of that RAM. Yeah. For the system yeah. that I couldn't access, and the golf game required 16, oh. and I was so angry. <laughs> you were like, what kind of bull crap yeah. is oh. this? I was so freaking angry. I, oh, I, wait, like the Microsoft Golf? I, or... No, it was like one of the original Lynx games, oh, okay, okay. I believe. Um, you would have known golf was apparently like <laughs> yeah. the killer app. Yeah, like me and my dad, were they, we were so excited. We're like, yeah, we're going to be able to play golf on this computer and, not, and then having to go mm. out and buy more RAM for this kind of shitty computer although at the time it was amazing mm -hmm. um you know full like 15 inch color display and all yeah. that jazz and it was super cool uh but yeah that's the one memory the one keen memory i have of that stupid <laughs> computer was the day that we tried to install links and it was like nope you don't have enough ram <laughs> it was the worst yeah like from my 386 i went to a 486 dx2 um and from that, I think I had that until I went away into university for the first time when I got my first Pentium. Mm. What? Yeah. We, um, you survived with that computer for, you're not, you're a couple years older than I am. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, we, we went from the, we I were, mean like. Yeah. Yeah, I was the, we, you know, we were, I was, we were sort of a Mac household, still are. We were not. We so, definitely weren't. So. so we went from the Mac Plus to a computer called the LC475. I didn't realize mm. at the time LC was low cost. That's mm. what LC stood for. That oh, was, it was like Apple had at the time Apple had like three tiers of desktop computers. There was like the the LC ones, the Performa ones, and like I think it was like the Quadra. They definitely ones. don't do right. that anymore. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, and so this is what sometimes referred to as the pizza box because it was about it was about this thick mm -hmm. uh, and big. It had um, the RAM in it was mounted diagonally because the box was so so small skinny. Huh. right um and uh yeah it it went along 640 by 480 screen 256 colors hmm. pretty sweet um and that was actually the first computer that i had uh i had an we had an external modem for that one. Ooh. Hmm. um yeah I think... me, me and my brother really lobbied uh my my especially my dad um uh with the with the the idea being it was like hey we will get this. We'll get an external uh, fax modem, right? Fourteen four fax modem, mm -hmm. and then you can use it as like it's like you're basically just also buying a fax machine, right? So you don't have to buy a fax machine. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah, I think we got the fax technology in it to work like once. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah. No, like that four eighty six was the first like internet mm. enabled machine that we had. Yeah, the Pentium ninety was the first for us. Uh, I think that was also around the time Windows 95. And yeah, wow. I had a friend who worked at the local ISP. Man, mm -hmm. I'm old. Internet, <laughs> I'm man. so old. Internet back in the day. I remember when we first got dial-up. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. had, we had 10, um, yeah, so basically it would just kick in with a phone line. Um, but I remember when we first got cable. Yeah, that was a lot different. That was a lot different, but it was also weird because we were limited to the number of hours. Hmm. Even like, on cable? Even on cable, yeah. We That's were, weird. Yeah, we were paying... Um, or no, maybe it was the dial-up. Like, like, yeah, because dial-up, you were limited in number of hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So we, I mean, had, we had 10 hours of internet a month. Yeah, I had that. Yeah, it was the same <laughs> thing. Which I couldn't even fathom. Like, at the, at, if, if you were to say, you can have 10 hours of internet a month or no internet... At this point in my life, I would probably just say no internet. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, but well, you, I mean, you would like kind of queue things. It, you use the internet in a different way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you would kind of queue things up. And yeah, you would do, and you would like, and you know, you write all your emails and everything, and then it dials up, sends them, and then disconnect. Yeah, yeah. So you would, you know, you would only use like two minutes of internet to yeah. send an email. Mm -hmm. But like, when you wanted the Mech Warrior Two demo, oh, yeah. right? That was. Oh my god! That was some board. planning involved yeah. around that. My my ISP had uh, had you had like red eye stuff, mm -hmm. so I started getting up like really early because you mm -hmm. could you got like double time. 
if you oh. used it before like 8 a.m. or that's, something. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I do not remember that. That would have been sweet. <laughs> so I used to start getting up at like 6 and start doing stuff on the internet. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, I was on like, even before internet stuff, I actually messed around like BBSs and things. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I definitely did not. Um, I never got yeah, into that. Yeah, I had friends who, who, ha who ran BBSs and uh, that's where I played uh, Warcraft Orcs versus Humans right. for the first time, right? Um, yeah, so, I mean, after, after that, we went to, like, a, we went to an iMac in my house. So we had, like, the little space egg yeah. iMac mm -hmm. thing with, mm -hmm. the, uh, with the circular, circular mouse. Yeah, right. Stuff. Built-in 56K modem at that yep. point. Mm -hmm. I remember after the Pentium 90, we went to a Pentium 3. And the Pentium 3... That seems like a big downgrade. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That's an 87... <laughs> Point downgrade, James. Um, so we went from that to Pentium 3, and the Pentium 3 was the last computer uh, that I had to share with my family. Mm. After that, a couple years later, I saved up enough money to buy my very own computer that I purchased from CompuServe. Do you hmm. remember where, where Atlas is now? There used uh, to be... Oh, it was Tesseract. Tesseract, yeah. Yeah, but before that, they were something else. Yeah. Oh, really? Yo, okay. yo, yeah. Oh. The right, yeah, it's it's actually yeah, the uh, yeah, CompuServe got turned turned into Tesseract. Yeah, and I think they actually have turned back now. Interesting. Somewhere else. Yeah, they're definitely somewhere else. But, yeah, somewhere but, else. Yeah. but yeah, I remember saving up enough money to to finally just buy my own PC, and that lived downstairs in my bedroom, and that's when I really got into PC gaming because hmm. I bought that PC with the sole intent of playing like Counter Strike and right. uh, and Warcraft three at the time, or maybe even it was just Warcraft two. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, that was a good day. Hmm. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I never I never had my own computer until I lived until I like went off to university. Um, actually, no, wait, I did <laughs> uh, in like grade eleven or something. Mm -hmm. They were like the only computer I ever owned. Like there was like mine, like in my room. Yeah, was uh, in like grade, I think it was like grade eleven or twelve. Uh, they were ditching a bunch of the computers that they had got. When, you know, when I was in like elementary school, oh, right. <laughs> and so for like twenty five bucks, I got like a three eighty six, and I was like, sweet, <laughs> and I got it uh, mainly to play like, because, and this this is me. I was you know I was playing Mac stuff all this time, right? Mm -hmm. And so I had missed like a bunch of three eighty six, and so I had I had like Dude Nukem and yeah. and uh, Commander Keen and right. Uh, that's where I played Star Control two for the first time. Hmm. Which I played on the stream and stuff, and it's an amazing game. Yeah. Um, so I got to play. I was playing like all the games that I had only been able to play at like friends' houses. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like uh, at, when I would go over to a friend's house, like my best friend in high school um, was. They were a Mac household, mm. so I would go over there and we would play uh, Escape Velocity. Oh yeah. Yep. Which was. Graham was big so into that sweet. game. So sweet. Yeah. yeah. It I was, was big, like I was it, big into that too. If you've never played Escape Velocity, imagine Eve. Uh, Eve Online without all the horrible bullshit. <laughs> well, there's just no online. Yeah, there's no yeah. online. Just think Eve Online, but cross out the online, and then yeah. you have Escape Velocity. Yeah. At one, yeah. At one point, he was thinking about playing it on stream, but oh, really? Because it's for you can get it from Windows now. Yeah. But I don't know if he ever actually did that. That was a great game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So and then sort of and then going off to school and actually starting to get own computers. Yep. Um, I mean, for me, uh, the when I did, when I went to, uh, off to college, the course I did was a course called um, uh, Information Technology and Applied Systems. And part of the course was the first sort of week of the course was you assembled the computer that you brought. Right. And so, mm -hmm. so part of it was I, that was my first Windows computer is I, Bought all the components, right? And brought so you bring you know you bring them to school, and obviously it doesn't take you a week to assemble a computer, but they actually <laughs> teach you. In some situations, <laughs> it might. They teach you how all the components work and mm. and mm -hmm. what they're for and you yeah. know, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and so uh, and so that was so you assembled your computer, and then that was the computer that you used for the rest of the time. That's which cool. kind of a cool idea. Yeah. So that was my first computer that was like mine. Yeah, I mean after I bought. That pre-built computer from wherever it was, um, that was the last computer I bought that was, yeah, pre-built. After that, 
I just built computers up until mm -hmm. probably about three years ago when I bought my iMac. Hmm. Um, because I was just kind of done with the whole building computers thing at that point. But for basically a decade, from like the age of 18 to like 28, mm -hmm. I just sort of built a computer and just upgraded parts mm. as right. the years so went yeah, by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the same computer. <coughs> nah, at that time. Well, not really. Yeah, like, same, ever, computer, same computer, but it hit, like swap motherboard and CPU. And did you ever do like a full swap or was it always pieces? There was once, one time I think I did a full swap. Mm -hmm. So I did a, a build. And that lasted me for about five years by upgrading the processor and the, the graphics card and the RAM and everything. And then at one point, I was like, all right, let's start again. And then I built that computer and did the same thing up until, again, like three years ago, at which point I bought my iMac, which I currently have. Um, and then, yeah, I was just sort of done with building computers at that, at that point. So I... Uh iMac like, for when you're done building, building computers. computers. Well, now I have like my computer setup right now is I have an iMac, which I'm going to sell and just get a MacBook Pro, and I have a my um, Windows laptop as well, hmm. my uh, MSI gaming laptop. So I'm at a point where two laptops. I don't even need two laptops. I've just I, I'm greedy and I want two laptops. So two mm -hmm. laptops. That's all the computer Take I need. Take twice as fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I love the uh, the ability to upgrade like components mm -hmm. bit by bit, and because you it lends itself really well to you know like uh, grandfather's grandfather's axe, yeah. right? 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 Yeah. Like you know this is grandfather's axe and it's been in the family for generations and we've replaced the handle three times and the head twice, but it's still <laughs> grandfather's axe, yeah. right? Which is a metaphor that also gets applied a lot to the uh, British royal family. Yep. <laughs> um, but like yeah, you've had the same computer for like twenty years. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but like. My most recent desktop, which I think I built for Dawn of War 2, which was Warhammer 40k, that was eight years ago, I realized. You're the only person in the history of human beings who said, I built a computer for Dawn of War 2. It was a rad game, James. <laughs> Including the people who game. worked at the company that <laughs> yeah. developed that. I mean, like, I, I, it wasn't uh, built for it, but it was built around the same time that that game was released. Yeah. Um, so I was like... Well, there eh. is always, like... A game or a program yeah. or something that you have like in mind when yeah. you're building. Yeah. Like I'm currently building this new system because Dark Souls Three is coming out. It's not a Dark Souls Three machine, but you know. I want to be able to play it on that. Yeah, I yeah. want to be able to play it. Um, Actually, I guess my um, the the time I did that switch over was for WoW. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> Hardcore gamer. Sure did play a lot of that game. Hardcore gaming. Yep. World of Warcraft. Um, yeah, like, I, uh, I like I was like you, where I built machines. Like for for a while there, whenever I get my tax return every year, I'd put it into a computer. Right. Um, until I decided that, that was stupid, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I haven't done that for like eight years. Um, but at school, like in in university, what I was working on was computational chemistry, right? And we all work with computers here. Like, I suppose to a large extent, everyone works with computers. Yeah. Now. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, we're kind of very intimately tied to it. Yeah. Um, where we work on the internet. And, like, my, my research in computational chemistry is totally tied to the existence of machines that can do large numbers of calculations very quickly. Right. 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 Like, the, the, the system I work in, um, or the, 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 the tool we use is called Metropolis Monte Carlo, which is an algorithm that, like, you calculate, you, you, you tell what system you're looking at, right? You tell, you know, the XY coordinates or you, 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 you give it an initial setup and it calculates the energy of that based on, like, some parameters. Right. And then it perturbs it in a way. Like, it, it, it uses randomness and that was why... Uh, a couple of years ago when it turned out the NSA had compromised a large number of random number generators and hardware, everyone suddenly became very concerned with what random number generator you were using for your Metropolis Monte Carlo <laughs> s s setup. Um, uh, and then it recalculates the energy again, right? And it compares the two, and if the energy is lower, it keeps it, and if it's higher, it throws it away and perturbs it in a different way. And then it takes the new setup, and it perturbs that again. And so, so you're looking for iterates through yeah. The whole thing. So you're looking for um, energy minima, right? To see how a system will converge, right? right. 
Um, and you do that, uh, if you're in a hurry, 10 billion times. Right. <laughs> right. Like that is not the kind of thing that you can do outside of that. And that's like a, a that, that algorithm was developed in the sixties or seventies. Right. Right. And now we can do it kind of casually, but like, that's my life. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that's like something that's completely unthinkable outside of the existence of these machines. Yeah, I mean, when I, um, you know, I, I, I worked for uh, uh, a couple of years um, for a, a museum design company, and then when I got uh, laid off from that, um, and sort of before that and also after that, yeah. um, uh, I, I was, I just sort of was doing um, freelance computer stuff. I mean, after that, it was mostly actual like web development stuff mm -hmm. but even like when I was a kid um, I like put up flyers and stuff and I got like a couple of customers of, right. of like you know teaching people computer stuff and I always liked like people would be you know I would be like whatever fixing their email or something um, and people would be like you know uh, I want to I want to be able to do this myself yeah how do I learn to do you know what you're doing and my answer would always be like, don't. <laughs> no. I spend like 12 hours a day <laughs> working on computers. Yeah. It, you spend your time doing whatever you're good at. Yeah. And then you give me money and I'll do, do the, this I'll, part. Yeah. Mm, this is the whole capitalist the, system yeah. we got yeah. going the, on the, here. The few times a year you need to get this fixed, just call yeah. me. Yeah. Trust think, me, it's not worth it. <laughs> think of it as hiring a, an electrician. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. Or a plumber. Or an auto mechanic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, computers are a little different in that they're sort of this universal tool. Mm -hmm. In that, a certain base level of competency is yeah. required, um, just to exist in the Western world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, they're also, I mean, as somebody who has done tech support, computery stuff um, in the past, there is always this thing where. Uh, the level of problem that your personal computer undergoes is always slightly more difficult than what you can handle, yeah. than like what you can fix. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that, but that's like a constant, regardless of how much you know about the like people who don't know much about computers have easy problems to fix. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people who who know a lot about computers have like IRQ conflicts, and they're like, what the. What? <laughs> How did this happen? Yeah. Oh man, interrupt request. Yeah. Yeah, I remember setting those for my first sound card. Yeah. Right. Dear God. Bad deal. Yeah. Wow. Like manually setting the IRQ and COM ports for everything because if you had them talking on the same channel, they wouldn't work. And wow. Hmm. Yep. Computers are weird. Yeah. It's the and there's also of course there's that that like. You know, when you're a kid, obviously you're just like playing around with stuff, and then you get older and you kind of interested in computer stuff, and and you get interested in the sort of nitty gritty things and the right. the you know configuring things and getting you know as much optimization as possible. Mm -hmm. And then as you get older, you switch just over. Don't and they, care anymore. I want an iMac now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's like yeah, that was fun. It's also kind of bullshit. Yeah, yeah. right. And there's also. You know, especially when you once you have like a job mm -hmm. that is, you know, a reasonable job. Like I, I remember that that's like that's when I stopped when I was a kid, when mm -hmm. I stopped or when I I guess when I was a little older, like just leaving university and stuff. When I stopped like doing a lot of like you know pirating video games and right. stuff. When I realized that I had spent like four hours trying to get this stupid thing to work, and it's like if I had just been doing my job <laughs> for this time, yeah. I could have bought the game. Yeah, exactly. It would have worked fine, and well, I would have had money left over. <laughs> it's like uh, the research group, right? Um, my my research supervisor, who you know, she she programmed like this. She she wrote her own mm. right simulation algorithm, right? She she handles all. She admins the 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 uh, cluster that we work on. She uses an iMac. Mm. Right, because she's like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> like, I don't yep. have time to like. It has a command prompt. Right. <laughs> right. It's the like yeah. you, you can just go to command line and and SSH in. I don't need a Unix box. I don't yeah, need a yeah. Sun box. 
right? Like, that sounds like a giant pain in my ass. <laughs> it's that as uh, over the course of your life, the, the time versus money equation <clears throat> mm -hmm. fluctuates. Oh, yeah. And as it fluctuates, the I'm willing to spend more time fucking around with my computer changes yep. mm -hmm. to save a little bit of money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, um, I was trying to think what other... I mean, of course, <coughs> now it, we sort of have this interesting system where, like here at, here at Loading Ready Run in the moon base, we are extremely sort of platform agnostic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we're very much um, uh, in the, you know, sort of, what is it, leave to Caesar what is Caesar's or whatever yeah, that yeah, yeah. thing, or it's like, you know, Mac, Mac OS and Windows are good at different things. Yeah. yeah. And partially that's because of the actual, uh, uh, how the operating system works. And a lot mm -hmm. of that is just, the software that's available. Yeah, yeah. Um, or which which is usually like a legacy factor of what the operating system used to be good at. Right. Right. Like, or or also stuff like you know like uh, you know we do of course we do um, all the editing on Macintosh computers because mm -hmm. we you know we edit in Final Cut which is an Apple program um, and we do a lot of all our you know Photoshop and stuff. Obviously you can get that for Windows, but mm -hmm. because we're doing all our editing on the Macs, it makes sense to also add Photoshop and stuff in there. Yep. Um, but the big thing with um, with all our streaming is, of course, done on Windows computers. Partially, that's because XSplit yep. mm -hmm. is the software used for streaming. Um, if you look at, if you go to like the Twitch page, that's like, here's what software to use. They'll be like, you could use OBS, you could use XSplit, or if you're on a Mac, you could use Wirecast. And it's like free, uh, free version. Or pay a little bit of money. Fifty dollars yeah. a year, yeah. or, or nine hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which which we did, which we yeah. did, and it didn't work. And very it didn't well. work very no. well. Um, so we're uh, so we use, and, and I mean the other thing. There's also a practical aspect, not just from the software standpoint, but because I mean literally, you can't buy a Mac anymore that can take uh, capture cards. Yep. For mm -hmm. instance, um, you can get external capture things, but that's not quite as nice. Um, they have this one thing they have to, and then you have to have like a whole bunch of connections. You have to figure out how those are things. So, yeah. you know, our uh, the, the computer that's recording this right now, the um, the sort of podcasting AFK streaming computer has uh, four. It's got three capture cards in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which can combine capture four things. So one's a double capture card, uh, you know, graphics card, all sorts of things, all sorts of stuff in it. The other computer, the, the streaming computer, has two capture cards in it. Yep. It's got an external, uh, it's got an extra um, a network interface card in it, so we can be attached to two networks at once. It's just like, you know, that, that flexibility is really important mm -hmm. for the streaming for part. For the streaming, yeah. Mm -hmm. For the editing part, the actual being able to get the software running and happy and working and is the most important thing. And we're not it's nice that we're in a we're in a state now in the computing world where that's not actually that big a problem. No. Mm -hmm. I mean the computers can mostly talk, talk to, each to each other, other. over, yep. the, over yep. the network. They can all access the printers. They can um, you know, a lot of, of course, the big thing, a lot of the stuff we do these days is web-based. So, you know, Google Docs, Google, yep. everything. So that works fine. Yep. You know, Chrome is available on both, whatever. So, uh, you know, we're at a very good time hmm. in terms of uh, doing, I mean, hell, if you get a, if you get, I mean, certainly if you get a Mac, you can do a boot into Windows. If you get a Windows computer, there are ways of yeah, you making can it build run, a Hackintosh. run Mac stuff. It's not yeah. as nice, but... Um, like dual booting, uh, like if you buy a, win a Mac and you boot it, you want to boot into Windows, it's not even the hack. That's actually like an official, software, yeah. an official yeah. thing from Apple to do that. Yeah. So it's cool that we're in a position now where it doesn't have to be. I mean, there's of course, you know, there were the, the sort of, you know, platform wars that used to be so important. Mm -hmm. And to some people they still are, but they shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. is, uh, is not that big a deal anymore. Yep. Yeah. Uh, or at least it shouldn't be. And people, uh, you know, you just use whatever you need to use for whatever you happen to be doing. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and uh, yeah. I guess that's, except for Linux. Nobody uses Linux. Yeah, I was thinking about taking my old desktop and installing Ubuntu on it and uh, just playing around in, you know, Debian. Mm. You know, doing a, a Debian Chivo run. But would basically. you do that if you have your new computer where you can play Dark Souls 2 and 3 and... You know, if I need to take a break, I'll play... <laughs> you know, it's just, an, it's just another game. That's right? true. Basically. Play, get my computer to work. Yeah, 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 you play this game where you get your computer to, to uh, find its own sound. I mean, part. I guess the, the, <laughs> real, the real thing that uh, is where Linux is, comes in and stuff is, is the, uh, you know, the smaller, you know, the smaller devices and things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, has started like, to become a big issue. Yeah. Or started to be a big thing, you know, Raspberry Pis and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're either doing like very small things or very large things. Yeah. With, with, <laughs> That's with true, yeah. Little things big. I mean, of course, yeah. I mean, we talk about Linux and stuff, but of course the Loading Ready Run website is right on a Linux server. Yeah, well, like the, the, the cluster that I would SSH mm -hmm. into to do all my simulations on is, is a Unix server. I mm -hmm. think it runs, what does it even run? It runs BSD. Of course it runs BSD. Um, Sweet. But, yeah, that's like, you know, a thousand blades deep underground in <laughs> yeah. front of you somewhere. Right? All right. Well, I think that was kind of a fun conversation. Yeah. yeah. Computers. Computers. We yeah. use them. It's a like, weird thing. Like, well, I mean, like, we, we kind of grew up with personal computing. Yeah, we did. Right? And, it's, like, I, I, yeah. I, I, I was a teenager for a large part before the internet. Right? Then, like... I turned 15 and Pamela Anderson posed naked in Playboy, and that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. The, the idea, I mean, that's, the, you know, I was born in 1983, yep. which is the, you know, the year that the Mac Plus came out, yep. actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't get it then, but, uh, and so, yeah, literally growing up there. And it, 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 it's a weird thing. Like, it's one of those, it, it is one of those things that somewhere in the back of my mind, there is that idea where it's like, you know, uh, I I consider myself to be extremely competent, you know, with computers, and I'm I'm you know, uh, my expertise in making them work and all do this stuff is very valuable, and it's a large portion of what I do here at Loading Ready Run, and you know, in the coming whatever zombie apocalypse <laughs> is completely <laughs> useless, useless. Yeah. like it's Absolutely. not it's not just like a you know you have like uh, you, you're you're you have a skill that isn't that useful in this particular circumstance. Yeah, it's the thing that your skill is for <laughs> will be gone. It will be gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it doesn't transfer to anything else. Yeah, like my my hope in the zombie apocalypse is that uh, the people that I am counting on to feed me have only a TV level understanding of science and I can just lie to them. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm a scientist. It's like, oh, that's really good. Yeah, we that's need, useful. We need you. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, you, you absolutely totally do. do. Lay uh, down your life. Yeah, it's like, I'll be, uh, I'll make a lab <laughs> and try to find a cure. Cure? <laughs> and they're like, awesome. Yeah. What do you need? Uh, <laughs> Pretzels? <laughs> you... Out of my way. Yeah. Yeah. A Bunsen burner? Yeah. yeah. That's a thing that people Be do. Beakers? Yeah. yeah. Liquid? One of those little things that go bzz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I think that's going to do it uh, right. for this week's Lurecast. But that was fun. Cool topic. And now we'll let Cam get back to building his computer. Woo! We'll, get it, we'll let him put his RAM in and maybe his video card, and then we'll drag him away for another podcast. No, just let me post. No, no <laughs> posting. I want, I want to make post. Post or riot. Oh. All right, guys. Uh, as always, it's not going to show up because nobody's over there to turn it on, but uh, mm -hmm. this podcast and all the stuff that we do is brought to you by you guys over at patreon.com slash loading ready run, and we always and always, always, always appreciate your support. So head over there and check it out if you are not already one of our lovely patrons. Uh, but we love you if you're not. You're cool people, right? People yeah. who aren't our patrons? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're cool people, too. <laughs> they're cool yeah, people. Yeah, if, if you've listened to this entire slightly podcast. Slightly less cool <laughs> slightly than less. the patrons, but yeah. still pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, maybe they're just listening to this podcast to, like, add to their receipt blog for us. That's true. That could who be knows? very possible. I mean, that, I, I suppose they're, yeah. But, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the people who have listened this far are probably... You're A-OK. -okay. Yeah. Thumbs up in our books. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.